Hey guys, welcome back to the Messy Garage. I mean, 803 Garage. Um, in the mail, I got this little cowling. So I, I was gonna keep it like this, kind of like rat rod style. But this little cowling will stick on here and it'll immediately change the way the bike looks. And I wanna paint that white. It does cover up the blinker on this side. So I might move the blinker down from here. You see right there and put it on the side of the light right here. So that will work. This also helps with aerodynamics, and I'm hoping that stays. You see it like that. And I want to paint it white. It comes with this little like this. And I'll have to remove that, which is fine. But this will sit just like that. And it'll avoid everything. Ah, oh, nice. So the look of the bike will change. And it'll become slightly more aerodynamic. And it'll look more complete. I like it. Well guys, as you can see, we're back at site C. No, more wait, the site, site B. We're at site B. We were at site C a second ago, but uh, we're back here at site B. I'm all confused. So what we're gonna do is scuff this up, clean it up, and then paint it up. We are sanding down the cowling with 80 grit sandpaper, followed by 220 grit sandpaper, followed by cleaning it with isoprophic alcohol. Primer by quite long. When using spray paint, make sure you take about two minutes to shake it up, and that way you get all the uh, ingredients ready to go, ready to flow. And I do about three light layers in drying time in between, and then uh, I move on to the beauty, well, the top coat. At this point in the job, when I primed it, and I painted it with the glitter, and it was supposed to be white glitter, it was translucent, so you still saw the primer bleeding on through. And I realized, you need a base coat. When I painted the purple rims, and I'll install a little uh, clip here. I didn't actually need a purple base coat. But the purple glitter is much different than the white glitter. Hence, I had to go over it with trim clad, which I was lucky enough to have by, or nearby, and it was fast drying. So I waited 20 minutes, and then I continued on with what we are doing. Trim clad, gloss white, fast dry. When painting, whether it's primer or top coat, I usually do three quick coats. White glitter. Make sure to test in the inconspicuous areas first. Glitter clear sealer. And with the flash time, we are good. So we're gonna flip it over, remount it, and start painting this side. We're gonna repeat the process that you just saw. So three light coats. We have a fan going, which is gonna decrease the dry time, but that is gonna multiply with the fast drying paint, at which point we're gonna switch over to the gloss glitter paint, and then the gloss sealer paint. Glitter sealer. Make sure you take your time when you're painting. Use the flash time to your advantage, just to take a break, but otherwise you will have runs. Alrighty guys, she's all cured enough to go home. A little sticky still. A little sticky still, that's okay. Any fingerprints? Yeah, a little bit, that's all right, whatever. Probably should wash my hands. Um, so I'll be very delicate with this and put it in the truck and then drive it home. Hopefully by that time it'll be cured a bit more and we're good to go. I do in the future want to sand this down and then clean it up again, but I've just been in a big hurry. I just want to put it on the bike. I'll have to deal with that. Oops. Oops. And we are home. I'm going to put on the hardware onto the hardware, to put the hardware onto the fairing, and then the wind windscreen onto uh, that as well. Looks good. It's not as tacky. I still see my fingerprint. <laughs> At this point in time, it's about 11, 30, 12 o'clock, but I just want to kind of put this thing together so that uh, I can finish off the video. Spoiler alert, the video doesn't get finished for another five days because <laughs> I started this on Monday. And today happens to be Sunday. Wow. Okay. It's been uh, almost a week, like seven days almost. Dang. Anyways, the cowling or fairing, depending what you want to call it, doesn't really matter. It is looking pretty snazzy. Looks pretty decent. Everything I expected it to be. And we're 
back out into the garage. This has been removed, still has the sticky backing. Before, after, not sure how it's gonna work for the install. This ended up being one of those areas that um, does not work. So I resigned myself to leave it as is, take a couple beauty photos, and um, we'll try again later. So as you guys already know, this is why you don't buy cheap Amazon lights. This whole thing fell apart. So that's just kind of, it is what it is. I'm not upset. Um, I'm just gonna try to assemble this all together so I can take some pictures and then I'll finish off the installation tonight. So I was gonna pull it out and like have it in the driveway and whatnot, take some pictures, you know, do all that. But you can see what I'm going for. I just kind of, it's electrical taped in place. I have to do a couple of little things, but it looks really cool. I have to, <laughs> there's lots of customization that's gonna happen. Um, for example, right here, I have to do some clearance for this uh, brake line. And that way, when it's in fastened in place, it won't be uh, touching anything. So I might have to do a little bit of clearance here. We'll see. The blinker is going on right here. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. I still have to permanently wire it. That's why I never did any actual wiring. Because um, some things don't want to pull through and get fastened and stuff. So when you're in the seat, it's going to look like that. You'll be able to still be able to see everything. This looks like it's in the way, I know. But when the rider is up here, you can still see when it's looking down and stuff. And I can always just move this to the side if I need to do what something. If I need to do something with it, might even come back up over here to block the uh, the uh, stop start button. But she's looking good, and I'll give you a bit more wind protection, which is what this was partially about. On the other side, I'm gonna have to uh, figure out something with this. It's not this one's not gonna come apart. The other one did, so I'll probably just glue it back together. But overall, if I step back at my messy garage. That's what she looks like, and she is bloody gorgeous. So we are going to fix the Amazon blinker. <laughs> Gorilla glue! Gorilla glue! So basically, I just glue around the edges, press it all back together. We should got a better view for you guys, so I apologize for that. But that blinker is now permanently in place. Well, that's never coming apart again. I don't mean by that be this. So, it is what it is. That's how you fix it. I gotta do the same to the other side that way they're even so i just spent the last hour trying to figure out again what these wires all mean flipping switches and doing this and that and doodads um, my theory on this is it's above my pay grade um, i have this, the headlight working in all fashions so i can still get what i need out of it um, i'm going to look into different headlights and i'm going to look into actually converting this back to the old school three wire kind of deal with the uh the handheld here and whatnot because there's nothing else here low and high and then you got your horn and stuff like that so nothing too spectacular so if i just put an old school one on here if i want to go that far then i can have the old school headlight have this working or well i'm just going to look into different headlight options because i like this look a lot but for now i'm gonna put it all back together get the cowling on because that's one of the bigger projects that I wanted to get done for this weekend. Having the headlight actually function for high and low and stuff. Um, that was fun. It was a good idea. I had, I had high hopes, but uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I still got full headlights with all the blinkers and doodads and stuff like that. So everything else works. And I did reposition my clutch cable to go around and kind of be up a little bit more, which I like that angle a little bit easier. Um, having things nice and smooth as like when you want to turn your motorcycle, you don't want to overcorrect because they know right away. That's why you just kind of keep the path. And that's the story of my life. Even if I'm about to crash, I just keep the path. Oh, look, a tree. <laughs> oh, look, a rock. <laughs> if you know me, you know it's true. That being said, we're going to get back to this and button all this up and see how nice we can make it look or just atrocious. One or the other. One of the end words. I've had some negative comments, some nasty comments, some atrocious comments about my work on the bike and what I'm doing and just having fun. For me, this is a learning experience and I don't mind the haters. 
So hate away because dream, my dreams are built on your tears. <laughs> That's how uh, Whistle and Diesel does it. That's how I'm going to do it. Alrighty, guys. The uh, cafe racer style cowling is done. Yes, it is zip tied in place. You can at me in the comments if you like, but I want a different look. Let me go. Everything works. And she's gorgeous. Will I change this in the future? You're almost guaranteed to that. But do I like it right now? Yes, she's good. We're sending it. And uh, I think this will be the last major cosmetic change to the bike. I'm pretty happy with the way she looks. So much better than your standard headlight. Now in the future, I may look into what it would take to uh, go back to this style only because I'm interested in doing the LED modification and I figured that'd be good, well, Grom content. <laughs> I can see my reflection. Noise. Now I have a garage to clean and uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. I'm definitely concerned with this project, the way it's kind of spiraled out of control, but hey, that's what having fun's all about. So I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.